Hi everybody, thank you so much for tuning in and watching this video. We do believe it's gonna bless you and you're going to enjoy it. If you wanna know more about Theonos and how to contribute financially to the ministry, please watch until the end of the video and we will give you more information. Enjoy the teaching. So last week we spoke about the fruit of emotional hurt and today we're going to speak about the cure of emotional hurt. So, um, and, we're looking at, and we're looking at Jacob's life and we really have to get to that place where we see what, what the Bible says and what God says. How do, we, how do we actually receive healing or how do we actually receive a cure? To emotional hurt. We looked at, like I said, Jacob's life. For those of you guys who haven't watched uh, the series yet, I want to encourage you, you don't have to, you, you don't have to um, go back immediately and watch the other two, but I want to encourage you to eventually watch the other two. But it's about this whole idea of Jacob Jacob's father Isaac loved Jacob's brother Esau more than what he loved Jacob. So Jacob competed against his brother his whole life for his father's approval until he eventually came to a place where he fooled his blind father to steal his brother's inheritance. And that's the video we did on the fruit um, of emotional hurts or the fruit of unhealed emotional hurts. We will, we will put the link of the video in and you guys can go watch that. So today we're going to speak about the cure of emotional hurt. And like I said, next week we're going to look at where Jacob was in a fight with God himself. And that is one of the things that's necessary for the cure. Sometimes you have to fight. Sometimes, you know, this fight will even be with God in a, in a healthy way that Jacob had. So let's look at it. Genesis 32 verse 24 to 32. So I'm going to read quite a lot of Bible scripture again and then I'm going to go into some of the practical things we can do to get a cure from emotional hurt. So the Bible says in verse 24, then Jacob was left alone. And I just want to give that as a point as well. Sometimes you have to be alone with God. Sometimes you have to separate yourself. Sometimes you shouldn't have all these people around you. But there are times where you need people around you, where you need counselors, where you need leaders to get healed so, um, or to receive your healing. Then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. So they did this throughout the whole night. Now night can represent like um, night time or it can represent time when you are, when you are alone. It can represent rest, time, time where you are supposed to rest. Or, and I think this is very important of what we're speaking about today, night time can represent dark times, difficult times, hard times. Verse 25, now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, meaning God was fighting against Jacob and God was not winning the fight, he touched the socket of his hip, meaning God touched the socket of Jacob's hip. And the socket of Jacob, Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So God here is saying to Jacob, let me go. Jacob is saying, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And there's a lesson in that as well, because so many people, they pray to God, they trust God, and they don't, they didn't receive their blessing yet. And they stop trusting God. They stop doing what God has, has told them to do or called them to do. And some people must just have that fight that Jacob had. One thing that I really love about Jacob is Jacob had fight. And that's a very great thing. So Jacob said to God, I'm not going to go unless you bless me, unless you do what I'm trusting you to do. Verse 27, he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Listen, sometimes there will be a struggle in your life. A lot of times there will be a struggle with men. Sometimes there will even be a struggle with God. Believe me, I have struggled in my relationship with God a lot of times. But the Bible says, God, God himself is saying, you've struggled with God, you've struggled for men, with men, and you have prevailed and you have succeeded and you have come out on the other side and it's a real picture of not quitting no matter what the struggle is then jacob asked saying tell me your name i pray and he said why is it that you ask about my name and he blessed him there so jacob called the name of the place peniel for i have seen god face to face and my life is preserved just as he crossed over to penuel the sun rose on him and he limped on his hip. Therefore to this day, the children of Israel do not eat the muscle that shrank, which is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip and the muscle that shrank. So what is the moral of this whole story is that 
Jacob had a fight with God. Jacob struggled with God. Jacob went into the presence of God and he got his healing. Now, going into the presence of God, like I mean, can mean different things. And I think all of those different things should be included. It can mean going into the presence of God alone, you in the presence of God, talking to God, even having a struggle with God like Jacob did. God can use other people to help you to get healed. And that can also be a struggle because it might be people that correct you. It might be people that help you to bring out past emotional hurts that you haven't dealt with. And that might hurt, might be in your church, in your community group. There are many things that God will use to help you to get your healing. But the important thing is though the important thing to know here is sometimes it might be a struggle and I think a lot of people don't receive their healing because they're not willing to go through the struggle to forgive is a struggle to expose emotional hurts is a struggle to acknowledge the fruit that comes out because of emotional pain like we spoke about in the previous video is a struggle because we are afraid that we will get judged we are afraid that people will look down on us and we're not afraid because of bad reason. A lot of times we might have had um, revealed some things and we were judged, we were looked down upon. And um, But I want to tell you, it's okay. God is not the one that's going to look down on you. And it's important to have leadership that's not going to look down on you, that's going to understand your authenticity, that's going to understand your calling, and that's going to help you to get to the place where God really wants you to be. But then the Bible says he touched the socket of his hip. Now, um, if you're in a fight with somebody, and I'm not speaking out of experience, I actually researched this. So um, it's 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 to 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 dislocate the hip of a person is a very tricky thing. It's a very skilled thing. It's not like just punching or breaking an arm or breaking a nose. It's a very skilled thing to 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 dislocate the hip of a person. So God was very skilled in this to 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 touch Jacob at a place, at a soft place that will change his life. So what am I saying to you? God is very skilled at touching that place that will, that will help you to get the healing that you need. But here's the thing, Jacob limped after, after God touched him. And a limp might refer to a hurt in your life. Now don't be afraid to hurt because just because you don't feel the pain right now doesn't mean there is a hurt. But when you reveal the hurt, there might be pain. I think the best example I can use is if you go to the hospital for an operation, you hurt more after the operation than before the operation in, in, in many cases. So when you work on yourself emotionally, when you receive, when you're on that path to receive emotional healing, sometimes it will hurt more emotionally before it becomes better. And this is what happened to Jacob. God touched the socket of his hip and it hurt first. It, it, he, he walked with a limp. So here's the thing. We have to be okay with our limps. We have to be okay with the limps of other people. Being okay with it doesn't mean it should be there forever. Being okay with it doesn't mean we shouldn't heal it. But being okay with it means that we shouldn't hide it. We should allow God to touch it. And we should reveal it to a place where we say, listen, I need healing in this area. This area really hurts. So what does the limp represent? We're going to look at three things. And with, with all three of them, I'm going to give you a few points of what the limp rep limp represented and this will help you to get to your cure now number one it changed his walk after after Jacob had this encounter with God he walked differently and I'm just I'm like in Jacob's life I'm speaking about a physical walk but in your life I'm not necessarily speaking about a physical walk I'm speaking about an emotional walk a spiritual walk your walk will change after your encounter with God so um, he will take you from pride to compassion so because of Jacob's emotional hurt, he was very, he was very prideful or, or full of pride. He was fighting for what he think he deserved every day. Now that in itself is not bad. I'm not, I'm not like, I, I, like I said earlier, I really honor Jacob for fighting for what he wanted. And I, and I do believe all of us should fight for what we want and fight for what God has promised us. But Jacob sometimes fought out of a place of pride because he thought like 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 he was jealous because because Isaac the father loved Esau more than what he loved Jacob and that was not a good place so he had no compassion over over Esau he was he he, he was actually willing to see Esau go down so so that he can get the blessing so this this different walk moves you from pride to compassion from 
competition to inclusion. Like I want to be the best version of me, but it doesn't necessarily mean I need to put my brother down or need to be better than my brother to get there. And that's one thing that God really had to heal in Jacob. And it takes it to a place of empathy. Empathy is where I'm excited for other people when they do well. And I will actually go out and help them when they're not doing well, because I care for the other person in a way that I'm actually, I'm actually them. And that's why, that's why pain hurt difficult times in life will really shape you to, to, to maturity to a place where you where you don't think you are better than other people to a place where you where you where you but you think you're good as well you know there's there's two ways this can go to in jacob's life was i want to be better than than i i want to be better than everybody else in gideon's life it was i'm not good enough and both of the extremes are not good. Therefore, I have to love myself and I have to love others. This is where the balance and the, and I don't want to say it's a balance like 50% love myself and 50% love other people, but it's 100% of both. I love myself well. I love myself 100% in a healthy way and I love others in a healthy way. So this is something that God had to change in his walk. And this is something that God will change in your walk but sometimes it takes a fight. And don't be afraid of that fight because luckily Jacob wasn't. And Jacob's name was changed to Israel because he was willing to fight. And just like Jacob, I wanna encourage you to fight until God introduces you to the person that he created you to be. And I just wanna bring this in. God had a, had, a, had a conversation with a guy called Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1 verse 5. And he said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you and I ordained you. And I wanna to say to everybody watching today, before you were even born, God knew you. He loved you he ordained you and he created you for a specific purpose and in this fight God wants to introduce you to the person that he created you to be and yes that means some emotional hurts must be cured some some unforgiveness and and lack of love towards yourself should be cured some unforgiveness and lack of love towards others should be cured but in that fight it happens and it's really really necessary so if you've been fighting with God and you you, you feel condemned about it I want to tell you Jacob did the same thing and God changed his whole life and he will do it with you but when, when I'm speaking about fighting with God, I'm not, I don't mean in a negative way where, you, where, 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 where you're like angry with God and you're cussing at God and things like that because some people actually do that. But fighting with God in the sense of like, listen, I'm going to get everything that God has promised me because that's one thing that Jacob did. Then number two, dependence on God. Jacob got to a place where he, where he said, okay, the things that I thought I could do for myself, only God can do. The things that I th that, that 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 I thought I should compete for, only God can give me. So he was competing for his father's Isaac love, not realizing only God can love me the way I really should be loved. And you know, I thank I thank God for every uh, every earthly father that are loving their children right. That's a very important thing. In Jacob's life, that wasn't the case, and in many lives, that's not the case. But I want to tell you, if you weren't loved by your father or by anybody, a mother, a friend, a spouse, the way you should have been loved, remember there's, there's, there's a void that only God can fill. That's why God has changed Jacob's dependence. Now his dependence is not, is not on Isaac anymore. His dependence is not like receiving from Isaac anymore. Now he received from God only what he could receive. And God changed his name to Israel, which means prince with God. So now... It was no more codependence. What is codependence? Codependence is I need to fix somebody else. I want to go find somebody out there to fix because if I can fix somebody else, then I feel good about myself. And I'm just bringing this in. I'm not saying necessarily that 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 Jacob had it, but codependence is 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 is, is that real thing of like I only feel good about myself if I can fix somebody else, and that's also like a lack of self love. But it should get to that place like I'm dependent on God. I'm dependent on God's love for me. If I receive God's love for me, then I can love me right, and I. I can love other people right and I don't have this need to constantly and consistently fix other people and also no more independence so I can be codependent where I really have where, where I really have this dependence on other people especially to help them or independence like I don't need other people whatsoever I don't want to help anybody I don't need the help of anybody um, independence is also something that God wants to heal because depending on God means that he will bring people in your life that will that will help you you know some people in your life is actually God's answer to your prayer but an emotional hurt person will, will be 
will be hyper codependent or will be hyper independent and neither of the two are good but your dependent should be on God and you should allow him to send the right people into your life uh, the final thing I want to say is Jacob walked in a way that you could see God touched him you could see in his walk, in his life, in a way he carried himself right now, that God touched him in a certain way. And God wants to touch you and heal you in such a way that the people out there can see, you know, God actually healed me and God actually touched me. So allow God to touch you in your weak place. Uh, the, the hip of Jacob represented the weak place, the place that is soft, the place that is not easy to touch. Allow God to touch that place. And I want to say this again, He might bring some people. And that doesn't mean you should trust and just listen to anybody that comes into your life, but it does mean that God can use other people to get you to a place of healing. Again, don't be, don't be that person that's hyper-independent. But God wants to change your walk, God wants to change your life, and He can use people to do that. Okay, and you have to allow people, the people that, have that, that are helping you now, you get three levels of relationships, those above you, your leaders, those on your level, your peers, and those under your leadership. You should allow people above you, the people who are your leaders, I'm not saying this is for everybody in your life, but the people who are leading you and helping you, they should be able to see your limp, you shouldn't hide it from them. And other people shouldn't feel like they, they, they need to hide their limp from you all the time, because people who are not healed, are very judgmental and very critical on other people so other people always have to hide their limp their unhealed parts in front of them so you have to be comfortable to go to your leaders the people or counselors or psychologists the people who God placed in your life to help you you have to be you have to get to that place where you say listen I'm secure enough to show you my limp to show you that weak part of me because God really wants to touch and heal the weak part of you and here's the, here's the other thing that I just want to close with is Pharisees never allowed limps you know, you're not allowed to limp in front of a Pharisee. I'm not speaking about a physical walk. I'm speaking about that weak part. You can never show your weak part in front of the Pharisee. A Pharisee Pharisees were so good in hiding their own weak parts. That's why they never got healing. It, it always was this religious cover-up for them. But they never received healing because they never allowed God to touch their hip. They never allowed God to touch the weak part of them. And I want to end with this story when when when. When Jacob became Israel, he had the opportunity to bless his son Joseph's children, Ephraim and Manasseh. So remember, Jacob was the second born and he was fighting for the place of the first born the whole time. Now, even, even when Joseph brought Ephraim and Manasseh to be blessed, uh, 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 Jacob or Israel at this time gave Ephraim the second born the blessing and he didn't give Manasseh the first born the blessing and Jacob actually freaked out and he said not so my father it shouldn't be like this the other one should get the blessing and here we just see Jacob's life playing out again right like he was the second born he wanted the blessing now here, here in Joseph, his own son's life, he gave, he gave um, Ephraim the blessing that was actually supposed to go to Manasseh and you know here we see here we see Jacob playing out again what happened to him but this is actually such good news but because this is a picture of God that there will one day be a father who will give the blessing to the second born us he will give us the blessing that the first born Jesus deserves and yes and here's the great thing about the story between Ephraim and Manasseh Manasseh the first born can be a picture of Jesus because Jesus was the firstborn and Ephraim the secondborn can be a picture of us we are the secondborn and here Israel gave the secondborn Ephraim everything that the firstborn Manasseh deserved and this is just telling us that we do not get anything because we deserve it we get everything because the firstborn Jesus Christ actually deserves then he took our place so that we can take his place so if you are praying, if you are trusting God for something, this is the greatest of the story. And if you trust God for your healing, if you trust God for your emotional cure, all of this, don't ask yourself, do I deserve it? Ask yourself, does Jesus deserve it? Because He was the firstborn and everything that the firstborn deserves, you now get. So we don't have to ask anymore, do I deserve it? We can just ask, does Jesus deserve it? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you today for your healing. We thank you today that you are reaching out. And we thank you today, Father God, that we can just bring our limp before you. I thank you that we can bring our hip, our, our, our soft place, the, the, the place that we don't want to be touched emotionally. We can bring it to you and we can say, Father, we allow you 
to touch this place. Even if you have to use other people to help us with this, we are not ashamed anymore to show our limp because it's only when we show our limp that we can really get healed. And we thank you, Father God. No more do we have to go on what we deserve, Father God. Just like, just like Ephraim got the, got the blessing that Manasseh deserved, just like Jacob got the blessing that Esau deserved, just like that we can get the blessing that Jesus deserves, Father God. So no more do we ask for what we deserve. We ask for what Jesus deserves because he took our place. We thank you, Father God, that you will do your healing power right now in Jesus' name. And if there's anybody watching and you say, listen, I'm not walking with God at the moment. I'm not walking with this person, Jesus Christ. He hasn't changed my walk and I really need him to. I really need him to touch me. I, need him, I really need him to walk with me. I really need this relationship. Just as an indication, if that's you, I want you to put your hand on your heart and pray this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I acknowledge I cannot do this by myself. Even if there are great principles, I need you in my core to feel me, to love me and to walk with me. I come today and I give you my life, I give you myself, I ask you to save me and I ask you to walk with me in Jesus name, Amen, Amen. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope this series helped and blessed you and um, I want to encourage you to share this message with people, to like, to subscribe, leave a comment and you know this will, this will help us to get the message out to more and more people. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon again. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you want to know more about Theonos, what we do, how we're building the kingdom and how you can contribute financially, please scan the button below. We really appreciate you and we believe God will bless you for your generosity.